In this video, we will solve path sum version 3 problem and it's uh, one of the favorite interview questions asked by Amazon. So here we are given a binary tree and we have to find different paths, just count of paths and not the actual paths with sum to a given value. And the condition is that it should not start from root or it's not uh, uh, mandatory that it starts from root. It can start from anywhere below root also or including root also both and it need not finish at the leaf. So it can start somewhere in the middle and end somewhere before reaching the leaf. So that's fine. Uh, only thing is that we can only go downwards. It's not that some part we include here and some part we include here. So the path should not be like this, which spreads from left going through root till right. So there will be one starting node and from there we will always come down. So it may be like this not branches. So if we come down from here and here also, then this will be branched. This will not be a path. So let's see how we can find that. We will be given some target sum and the sum of that path should be nodes on the path should be equal to that tar target. So here the sum is 8 and we have 10 here. So if you see here, you see that 5, 3. This is one path. whose sum is 8, then we have this 5, 2 and 1. If you sum them, again it's 8. Similarly, if you sum this, minus 3 and 11, again it's 8. So even negative values are there. So uh, there are 3 paths. So in this case, we will return 3. Now, uh, how did we arrive at these solutions? So what are the solutions? We have 5, 3, then we have 5, uh, 2, 1 and we have minus 3, 11. So there are two things. In one case, we have to look for path which includes root. So if we include root in the path, then the remaining sum will be uh, 8 minus the current value that is minus 2 and negative is allowed since the nodes can be negative. So if it goes negative, it does not mean that uh, we cannot find any path below it. So we can find. So case one, we have to look for all the paths which including root. This is case one and there can be case two where root is not included. So what will happen? In this case, sum is updated. So in this case, sum is updated to sum minus root dot val and in this case sum remains same it's not changed at all since we have not included the root we are explicitly dividing it into two scenarios in one case we are including the root and trying to find the remaining sum below it in other case we are not including it at all so we will try to find the exact same sum in just this part left subtree and right subtree so this is the difference of in one case sum is reduced or maybe increased if this value was negative in other case it remains same so we need a way to distinguish between these two sums so we will have uh, a main function let's call it path, path sum and it takes root and sum and now we have to divide it into two parts case one and case two so let's call them f1 and f2. In one case, we will pass the sum. So let's pass the sum in both of those and then while defining them, we will differentiate. So uh, in one case, we will calculate f1 root dot left and uh, then pass the exact sum plus root dot right and exact sum. So in this function call, sum never changes. So this is the case where we are excluding the root and trying to find the exact sum in its subtrees. So this will be done by f1. We can uh, use path sum as one of these f1 or f2. So we will uh, make the changes in the code. So this takes care of one case. Then the other case is we have to include the current value and pass the remaining sum. 
so the job of that function will be to always include the current value since breaks are not allowed so you include that and pass the remaining sum to its children and there we should not mix the two things in this case in this case it's not that we have passed let's say here we had 8 and this value was 2 so we passed 6 here as the sum the job of this function is to find a path of length 6 so in this case we have to always include this value it's not that we did not include that and here we found a path 6 and we returned its count so this 2 and this 6 cannot be included so one function's job is to always include the current value and pass the remaining value we cannot mix the two functions so this f2 what it will do uh, it will include the current value so it will call f2 root dot left and sum minus root dot val plus f2 root dot right sum minus root dot val so this is the second case so the way f1 and f2 are defined is different so uh, we can also use the original function as f1 and here what we will do so you should be convinced that this should work if we divide it separately into f1 and f2 and what we do from path sum is that we simply return f1 root sum plus f2 root sum then f1 and f2 handle it differently in one case it always excludes in other case it includes uh, so in this case what we will do we can define it like this so in this case we, we also have to look if roots value is equal to sum so we had been including a few nodes before it and now we are here at this value let's say and the remaining sum was 3 and before it we had sum minus 3 so we had to find a path of length 3 and this value itself is 3 so we increment the result count by 1 so while returning we can add 1 to it so this is one more thing that we need to take care and in both these functions if root is null we return 0 so in path sum we can write path sum so here path sum will act as f1 or left sum plus path sum right sum plus whatever is f2 so pass root and sum so it will start including root and passing the remaining values so this should be our complete function so let's write this in uh, c++ java and python so i have pretty much covered everything what's given here except for this and this we don't need for our case what's the number of nodes we will not be writing anything specific to this so if root is null return 0 else return path sum the same sum we are excluding it and let's define the other function also So if this is the function where we are always including the current value and then proceeding below so if at any node we reach a, a node where uh, the required sum below it including the current node is same as sum then we increment the result else we add to the result so we have not reached the sum so whether we have reached the sum or not if we have already reached the sum then we will pass 0 below it since 0 is also possible there can be positive and negative so uh, we just increment root left and sum minus 
root val and the same thing for write and finally we return the result so uh, we pass the same sum and try to find the sum in the left so this will do that thing then then this function takes care of uh, including the root and everything below it and then the same thing for write and the solution is accepted and we are right here so we are right here in the top zone if you try a few times I'm pretty sure you can reach in the top also so let's write this in Java and the java solution is also accepted and here we are slightly around this peak so there are a few distributions and we are in this distribution now let's uh, write this in python and the python solution is also accepted so what is the time complexity here if you see uh, we are in one case we are not including it and then calling it recursively on left and same on right so that will traverse the complete tree and we have another function where we include this and again uh, call it recursively on left and right so we are doing two traversal of this tree so it's o of n and if you look at the space complexity uh, then uh, we can have in worst case a long tree and all the nodes are in the stack function stack so if you count that function stack as the space then that will be o of n so time is defin definitely o of n it's in fact theta of n but space if you count the function stack space then it can go up to o of n otherwise if you don't count it you are only looking for auxiliary space then we are not using too many variables so it should be o of 1 in that case <laughs> 